It is mailbag day. You got Bobby up in here. You got C-Dub up in here. Matt Eberflew said that Caleb Williams is the number one QB1. I say, no question. No shit. What we talking about here? <laughs> so we going to talk about that. Jump into the mailbag. Have a little fun. Kick it. Chop it up on this beautiful Saturday. But you already know, we got to play the music first. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears. If you're tuned in with us, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. C-Dub, what's the word? I admit, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for football, bro. I don't care. It's so far away. I don't give a shit. Let's get to it. <laughs> Facts. So yesterday was the first day of Bears rookie mini camp. And during a press conference before the first practice, Matt Eberflus came out and said there was no need to have a conversation. Caleb already know he's QB1. He's an enhancer. He said a couple of other things. And I heard that and I said, well, no shit. Like you <laughs> Oh, we even press the cord. <laughs> no <laughs> way. And uh, yeah, I'm going to let you go ahead and get your thoughts on that one before I get my thoughts. Go ahead, Brody. Yeah. Um, I know it's a cave somewhere in, uh, in, in Chicago Bears fandom that, you know, they they derad Tyson Bajan and they think he was had a chance to be the number one quarterback. Uh, DeMar DeRozan talks a lot about mental health. And he has a, mentor, a memoir that's dropping on September 10th. I think you guys in that cave should get a copy and everybody should go ahead and read that or get the audio book. No shit. Caleb Williams is the quarterback. I don't even think it should be a much analysis on it. It's really crazy. And whoever asked him that question in that press conference, you should be should be sent to your editor's office so he can have a nice talk with you. You couldn't have you had any <laughs> other questions to ask. You asked that dumbass question. Just no shit. <laughs> Facts. And, uh, and I was excited to talk about this because I seen a couple of our own Bears fans on Twitter talking about, I wish the Chicago Bears would have made it a competition. A competition Compet with who? A competition for what? What are we doing? See, that's the problem with the Chicago Bears of the past. They play too many damn mind games. We're not playing no mind games. So I give it up to Matt Eberflus, Ryan Post, this coaching staff, and this front office to say, bro, we drafted him for a reason. Bro, we know the talent that he has. Bro, Tyson Bajan is not QB1. Bro, why are we going to sit here and beat around the bush, play and act like Caleb Williams has to somehow earn his spot? He's already got it. He's already got it. From the time he sat down with Matt Eberflus and Ryan Pose to the time that he they met him at the draft to the time that he went to his pro day to the time that they had him sit down with the veterans, he was going to be QB1. Ain't no time to sit here and play games, pussyfoot around the bush, and act like Tyson Bajan ever had a chance. Adam Rippon ever had a chance. The undrafted rookie ever had a chance. Stop it. So shout out to Matt Eberflus. And shout out to the Bears for stop for not playing games. It's time to get to work. It's time to get busy. It's time to get Caleb Williams acclimated to what's about to happen in Chicago. And that's Dubs for C Dub. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, you talking about, man? What the fuck? And nephew, usually, I, I mean, I am. Uh, I think I'm a pretty nice guy, nephew. But right now, I'm gonna just be disrespectful. Right now. There ain't no skill in there to even think about to have the notion to have anything to have a competition. Ain't no ain't, ain't nobody in our quarterback room got enough skill to say, besides Caleb, of course, to say you got you okay, you good enough to compete against Caleb Williams. And he and he a rookie. He ain't even had a snap in the NFL. I know that's disrespectful to Tyson Bajan. He played last year. He played in actual NFL games. Mark Rippon played with uh, the Seattle Seahawks uh, last year. I don't know if he, he got Or the Rams game. or something. One of them two teams. Yeah, one of the two. I think it was Seahawks or the Rams. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I know y'all will. Uh, but no disrespect, but disrespect. <laughs> ain't no fucking way it's going to be a competition. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? 
<laughs> it's okay, y'all. It's Saturday. We know some people still off that juice. It's Not okay. As long as you ain't on that bad juice, you Gucci. The people that spit, you, you got to spend money if you want to drink good. If you go ahead and you try to be treat, get your E&J, your Paul Massage, your Saveca, your Jose Cuevo, she going to feel a little iffy waking up. But if you go ahead and get you some Terramana Anejo, some Don, some 1738, some Duce, some Henny VSOP, you might wake up a little more lively, stretching, feeling good. If you tell, <laughs> if you land something that's something that feel good, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna wake up feeling groovy, no headaches. <laughs> Nephew, I don't even think that's liquor. <laughs> 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 Those are pebbles, and I don't mean the ones that's on the beach. <laughs> you know I mean? They in bags, yeah, <laughs> they in little bags, little pharmacy bags for sure. <laughs> but hey, y'all, let us know y'all thoughts below on that because it was no question for me that Amen. you don't play around with something like Amen. this. But hey, let us Amen. know in the comments. Amen. Did you want to see a competition? You crazy? I'm gonna let you know Amen. right now before I even read the comment. You crazy? Hey, just like Stephen A. say. Stay off of the rocks. Hell is you talking about? <laughs> he talking about the rocks. He say the weed. Uh. These motherfuckers on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we going to jump into these mailbags, man, and these voicemails. C-Dub, the first one up comes from Book. Book. Here it is. Yo, 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 Bobby C-Dub. What's up? This book, man. Blessings to you and yours. Uh, Rookie Mini Camp is here, man. Um. Can't really, you know, you know, you can't really judge too much because, you know, everything is, you know, shorts and everything. But, you know, it's just good to see some type of football being played, man. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to the real. But uh, I, I got a thought, man. You know how they always have, like, the quarterbacks, like Caleb Williams, you know, called up the wide receivers and everybody. They all met up and they've been practicing together and everything. With everything that happened with the centers last year or the last few years, I think that they should or he should organize just some stuff with the centers, man, just to work on snaps, man, just work on the shotgun snaps, the, the handoff snaps, all the snaps, just so we won't have any issues like they had last year when, you know, Justin Fields wasn't a quarterback. He became a shortstop and a left fielder trying to stop, you know, trying to stop the ball from going past him. But uh, that's all I wanted to say, man. Just a little thought, man. I just think they should get some work in together like they do with the wide receivers. That's all I wanted to say. A uh, special shout out to Hayes and the rest of the crew and the rest of the of the, of the, um, of the family. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Chicago up, bear down. Y'all have a good weekend, man. Shout out to you, Book. You always calling in, giving those well thought out messages. I appreciate you, big dog. Um, and I'm right with you. If at Caleb Williams, if you're gonna schedule some more stuff with your wideouts and your tight ends and your running backs, let's get some your offensive linemen involved as well. So, uh, Caleb Williams said, "Think something, C Dub, that really stood out to me." He said, "As of right now, for uh, in order to me to be a great leader, I need to be a great follower first. So I'm gonna listen to my vets. I'm gonna learn everything that I need to learn." And then I'm going to know when the time is right to where I need to be more vocal. I'll be able to put guys in positions to succeed, but I got to focus on doing my job first, pretty much. I'm paraphrasing there. So that's is what stood out to me. Hopefully he backs it up because we got to see it on the field. And, uh, hey, shout out to you, Book. Yeah, um, I'm going to do a pre-pause for what I'm going to say right now. You would think that uh, quarterback center exchange will be really easy. You get a big three hundred pound guy bent over, and in the quarterback's hand on the on the, you know underneath that that he get the hike, you know what I'm saying? You think it'll be easy? Just pass the ball between your legs, you know what I'm saying? But we had we got I said pre pause nephew, I said pre pause. <laughs> you did you did. Uh, and so so we got PS, PTSD from last. <laughs> 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 we, uh, we got PTSD from last season, nephew, because our quarterback uh, center exchange was just like, for some strange reason, and I don't think it's an NFL team in the league that had the problems that we had with center quarterback exchange, either in the shotgun or on the center. So I, I do think that they do a lot of work on that. that you may be surprised. Some of y'all might be surprised, but I do think they do a lot of work on that. Uh, but it wouldn't hurt if they, what do you want them to go to the to the uh, 
near his high school and just practice uh, quarterback center exchanges? How would you? I think you you can do enough of that when you have to go to Hallis Hall or to uh, Bear Bernay or something like that. I, I don't think it should be that hard as it, as it is, nephew. To tell you the truth, fair enough. I ain't mad at it. Hey, it can go either way. But hey, shout out to you, Book. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we about to jump into this next one. C Dub. This next one comes from one of our family members, K Two. K Deuce. Here it is. Yo, yo, yo! What up, fellas? It's your boy K Two again, man. I'm just calling in to just praise my team once again, man. Because let me tell you something, bro. I watch. I just watched those interviews of Caleb Williams and Adunze and uh, Matt Eberflus. And, man, you know what, bro? This year just feels different. It just feels different, bro. I don't know. I just – I'm so excited, bro. I'm just so excited, bro. I know everybody else is, bro. But, like, I just want to – I just want to simply talk about the poise that this young man walks around with. And I love it, bro. Like, Caleb Williams has an accountability system mentally that I love. And that's what you need. That's why his confidence is so high. Like, that's what you need at the quarterback position, man. Him being a rookie, bro, the minute he said that in order to lead first, you got to follow. So I'm just, I'm just following my coaches and my vets, and I'm keeping both ears open and my mouth shut. We – are about to do something special this year, bro. Like, I know I said that last time I called, but, like, no. This year is something special going to happen, bro. Like, I think, you know, when we talk about records and yards and touchdowns and all this other stuff, bro, like, I think we're going to do something more special than all of the stats can even even convey, bro. Like, I think, I honestly believe, bro, this is the first time in NFL history that a rookie quarterback can go to a Super Bowl and actually win. Now, those are high expectations. And like Bobby says all the time, they got to put it on wax. But I think I'm, I think I, I think I feel like I'm confident enough to say, and most of us probably all feel the same, man, because we all getting that feeling that this team is going to be very good. They're, just, they're going to jail fast. Defense, offense, special teams. Yes, special teams, because i tell you right now, man, the crocodile punter is going to be a key factor to a lot of wins and a lot of field position this year, bro. Defense is going to be solid, and I feel like our offense is going to be so A-plus, bro. It's not going to even, like, it's going to scare a lot of people. I don't know, man. That's just how I'm feeling, man. I hope y'all having a great weekend, bro. Cognac boys, Hayes, uh, Kevo, Steve-O, all y'all, man. I love y'all, man. Continue to keep doing what y'all do, man. God bless y'all. Chicago up and bear down. Shout out to my guy, K2. Blessings to you and yours as well. C-Dub, take it away. Hey, shout out to my man K2. He's been always uh Caleb Williams fans going into the mid part of last season. Uh you said something crazy. What well, not crazy, but what uh Caleb said, I'm gonna keep both ears open and my mouth closed. And I'm a, I'm here to tell you, uh, once he get it, and I do think he'll get it pretty early, it's gonna be something different, bro. I, I it's just I I do. I know I get on here. And I was supposed to get my analysis of the team, and I hope to be somewhat professional, but, I, you know, I don't like that. I don't like to put myself in that lane. It's something about this kid, confidence, and his belief in his skill and his talent that I'm like, bro, we got these expectations uh, for rookies when they come in this league. And I think it's fair because no rookie comes in here and just blows up the spot. But that's not like – a fact that's like it, it's been happening ever since football began but that's not like this is actually going to be happening what's that one percent you know you got them biker games you got two percenters they like the two percent of population in the world what if this guy's a one percenter if you get my drunk and i do think we're gonna the expectations may be high like some might be think we might go to the playoffs this kid lead us to the playoffs i think he better than that i'm not saying the super bowl 
I think this kid is better than that. And with all the, the weapons around him and the defense, um, I think he may exceed expectations this season. So I'm with you with, with that, K2. I'm and I'm even. not talking about no kicker. Talking about crocodile punter. Get that kicking shit out of here. Man, you already know special teams gonna be going crazy. Stop playing. We're gonna be he just punch, he just pinned them in like he did that 10. He just pinned them back in the 10. We're gonna be right there. Why you live callers? Stop the cap. But anyway, I'm with both of you guys. I think I'm not gonna go as far as K2 said with we can go to the Super Bowl. Hey, but I seen crazier things in my life. But I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I gotta wait. <laughs> I gotta wait. But I do think that this season will be one that we talk about for, for years and years down the road um, because the way that it's set up, the defense is solid. The offense is coming together. They just got to jail and put it upon themselves to be successful. And I think the uh, addressing the special teams by going out to get it an undrafted, excuse me, an undrafted guy like Ian Willer gives you a chance. And then you still got Vegas you can work with. You can still work with Dante Pettis, but you got a solid kicker. Now you're looking at a punter that you pick up. I know C-Dub don't want to talk about it, but who cares? We're going to get love to these kickers on this episode. That's two AK2, I'm excited too, big dog. Just two examples of one percenters, Randy Moss, Adrian Peterson. They didn't go to Super Bowls, but their impact was crazy their rookie years. That's all I'm saying what a one percenter is. For sure. Understood. But, hey, shout out to you, K2, man. Have a great weekend, for sure. C-Dub, this next one comes to one of our homies from Chicago by the way of Arkansas. Here's the message from Tyrese. Tyrese. What up, Cognac boys? This your man, man. It's Tyrese. Southside, Arkansas. Anyway, check this out. Uh, training camp, man. I'm looking forward to seeing some real-life, competitive competition with our offensive linemen that we had brought in as the undrafted free agents. I want to know how healthy is our third round pick. I want to know how how nimble is this big guy that we got from uh, from Canada the Canada League. But I'm really intrigued by this Western Kentucky quarterback, man, because I know competition is our main thing right now, and I want to know because I've been checking them out, man. Dude looks pretty decent, man. Like, is it going to be him or is it going to be Tyson Bajan? Tyson Bajan, you know, he, he won us a couple of games last year. It's the same thing, small town school, whatever. But he might have got a little competition um, with Reed. And one more thing, man, I want y'all to be on the lookout because it's too Two players on that defensive line that I believe that could actually make the team, which everybody know about um, the boy up out of Illinois. But, man, y'all be looking out for that boy out by the James Madison. The defense. All right. It seemed like we lost you that, Tyrese. But, C-Dub, I catch, I catch the drift. It's definitely going to be some players that we're going to be watching for um, the Chicago Bears who could potentially earn that spot. I just say, hey, the guys is up to them. You know what I'm saying? These guys went undrafted for whatever reason. But sometimes you can find a diamond in the rough in the undrafted. Hey, we got one in Jack Sanborn. Hey, yeah. so you never know. You know what I'm saying? Somebody can rise to the occasion. But, again, it's going to be up to these young guys to figure it out for themselves. It's going to be up to these young guys to stand out. When it's time for preseason and training camp, who works the hardest? Are you a guy that leaves early or are you a guy that's going to stay late? Try to get the, the system down, get the scheme down, and be able to shine not just on the field but off the field. Are you going to go ahead and shine and make impactful plays during preseason? That's how you make a name for yourself because Kayla Williams would not be out there for an entire game. So the quarterback, Austin Reed, what you going to do? You going to earn you a spot. Randolph, what you going to do? It's not going to be a it's not gonna be a Javon Dexter the entire preseason. It's not going to be an Andrew Billings the entire preseason. Are you going to go out there and make a name for yourself? It's going to be up to them young guys. C-Dub, what you got? That was great, and I'm going to pick you back. Uh, the key word is an opportunity out there for you young yes. guys, bro. It's an opportunity, especially on the defensive line. Uh, and in that, that second, the second option for quarterback, the, the second string, that's an opportunity if you're one of those guys and you're not Tyson Bajan. If Tyson Bajan fell off a little bit, you come in and show what you can do, and maybe you can overtake him and be the guy that back up the the kid, Caleb Williams. And and uh, it's up to you guys. How, how's your hard work? Um, how's your drive? How is your want to? So it's, it's, it's not up to us. 
to to say, man, this guy's, man, these guys got a good chance. No, it's up to them because they're going to get ample opportunity in training camp in the preseason. So it's up to them guys. Facts. And Tyrese, I don't know why every time you call, it's a bit shaky. Let's make sure that connection is good, my guy. We want to make sure that we play your voicemail all the way through. This is the second time in a row we had to, you know, try to figure it out for you. We do appreciate the call, but let's make sure that connection is strong so that people can hear your takes because the takes be solid, bro. You was cooking, bro. I hope you ain't got no Obama phone, bro. Obama phone, my nigga. <laughs> but hey, shout out to you, Tyrese. Um, C Dub, this the last one of the day. You already know we can't do no mailbacks, no, no mailbacks, no mailbags without including this guy because he's black yet again. C Dub, this next one and the last one of today is from my reefer. Here it is. Bobby. Hey, the Cognac Boys, what's happening, fellas? It's your man, Marifa Asa, black yet again, man, in CBC, doing my thing, man. You know what I'm doing. I'm calling today to talk about my favorite topic, the offensive line. But today, it's going to be specific, okay? I'm talking about Kevin Jenkins, man. Kevin Jenkins is in a critical year on this offensive line. This is his contract year, okay? Kevin Jenkins is in a critical year. He got to perform, man. He got to do or to have a great year this year. If he don't have a great year and he don't play a full season, Ryan Poles will not pay him that top dollar that he looking for, okay? Now, if Ryan Poe got rid of Khalil Mack, he got rid of uh, Roquan Smith, he got rid of Justin Fields, he damn sure will get rid of and not hesitate to get rid of Kevin Jenkins and replace his ass, okay? Now, Kevin got to come out and he got to play a full season. He been there three, four years. And he ain't played a full season since he got to the bear. So he got to prove that he can be healthy. Now, he's good in the run game. But he got his ass kicked on the last game in Green Bay. Go back and look at the tape. It'll show you he got his ass kicked, okay? So he can't be replaced, okay? Karan, I'm a DZ. I'm a, a mega DZ. I, I hope y'all said his name right. He there, okay? <laughs> He there. Now, that's Holes' his guy. Holes, go, he picked him, so he's going to be there. But Kevin got to work his ass off, okay, to prove something. Now, I'm going to say this before I get up out of here. You know, I got places to go. I got people to see. But, you know, before I leave, I'm going to say, don't tell no lies about me. I ain't going to tell no truth about you, okay? <laughs> it's your time to go up and bear down, baby. Let's go. Hey, he said they not like us. They not like <laughs> us. They not like us. Hey, <laughs> but my reefer, what better way to end another mailbag episode by hearing your voicemail, man? And just real quick, I'm right with you. This is a critical year for Tevin Jenkins. However, me personally, I don't think he needs to play the entire season. It will be great. It will be great. But if he can give me 14 solid games, I think that would be good enough for Ryan Post to say, hey, I'm going to pay you. I'm with you on the last part, though. You ain't getting top dollar, though. Mm-hmm. I'll pay you, but you ain't getting top dollar. I think I understand Karan. Look, I don't even know his last name. I think it's Obadaji. Yeah, so I, I'm going to let C-Dub try for y'all. <laughs> Obadaji. Hell you talking about? Yeah, I, I think that's you. his last. <laughs> hey, I ain't trying to disrespect you, big dog, Karan. We just, look, it's a it's a struggle sometimes for us CPS students. I'm just saying. That's Chicago Public Schools. It's a problem. Trust me. See, Dub, what you got before we ride out. Um, uh, both of you guys, I like both of you guys' point. Uh, Tevin Jenkins, I think he already performs. I think he just got to survive. And I disagree with Nephew on that last point that he only got to play 14 games. I think he got to survive the whole season with no hiccups or nothing, you know, no injuries that's going to keep him out of any game. That's what I think personally. 
and I don't know what you got to do with your diet, your fitness, or whatever it is. Lay off the Giordano's. Lay off the Patillo's. Lay off all of that shit, bro. Just get a little bit, bro. You ain't got to eat that shit every day. I know you a big man. Y'all like to eat in the NFL, bro. You got to work on your diet and your fitness, Tevin, because you a beast when you out there, dog. You a beast. That's why I say he already performs. Just got to survive, dude. We I'm with you straight. on that. For sure. Yeah. It'll be great. It'll be great. And no BBL glizzies. <laughs> no BBL glizzy. BBL glizzy. <laughs> BBL glizzy. <laughs> Oscar Mayer, y'all bogus. <laughs> C-Dub, you got any? Bro, they came out with a campaign what? saying BBL glizzy. Who? Oscar Mayer. Siri, ain't nobody say nothing to you, gang. Hey, <laughs> BBL Glizzy. <laughs> you got anything, Who, bro? Whoever owned Oscar Mayer gotta be a baby boomer, bro. They have no <laughs> idea what's going on in the world right now. <laughs> a BBL Glizzy, y'all. <laughs> bro, what? But, but hey. Just want to, before we go, I just want to say we appreciate you guys and ladies for always calling in, sharing your thoughts with us so we can go ahead and have these mailbag episodes. We've been running for consecutive weeks now, I think way over a year with doing this. And uh, it's all thanks to you guys that we are able to do things like this. So thank y'all so much. And we really appreciate y'all for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. If you want to be a part of an episode like this, go ahead and call in, leave your voicemail, leave your take, turn up like my Reefer, Sai, Tyrese, King, Booker, Fred, whoever, all the, all the lovables, you know what I'm saying? All of the family members, join in, join the family. So do that by calling in and leaving your take and you will be played on one of these days, Friday or Saturday, or if it's a, too much, we'll play it during the week, damn it. But that's it from us. We tuning in to the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls. We're going to catch y'all on the next Bears. One. Bears. We're going to catch y'all on the next one. Are you at him? Oh, no. I'm good. Hey, we'll see Peace out, time. ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy y'all weekend. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.